In this video, we have a big cooldown with the summertime cold front as tropical juice drifts into the Gulf of Mexico with the potential tropical disturbance developing. Good morning, everyone. Pal Pondron Weather here with your Monday morning update. If you are new to the channel and you do like detailed weather breakdowns, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture uh, this morning. And you can actually see this welcome cold front, <laughs> cool front, weak cool front, but it's a cold front. There's much cooler conditions trail behind it. And you can see a lot of shower activity right ahead of that, right ahead of that uh, cold front here in a portions of the Southeast, getting into portions of the Ohio Valley, but especially a little bit stronger activity up here this morning into portions of Vermont and New Hampshire getting into Maine. But the standout is this little disturbance down here into portions of down into Galveston coming right off the coast. This is actually going to be just kind of drifting west, southwest over the coming days combined with this cold front and actually develop a low pressure center uh, over the next couple of days that could slowly drift and actually bring much needed rain and a good chunk of uh, Texas there's the monsoonal flow continuing to drift and just relentless amount of moisture. Uh, we've seen well above average rains over the last two weeks in this area. And I think the monsoonal flow will just actually continue with tropical storm Celia still out here in the open waters of, of the Pacific, actually helping to amplify and feed this monsoonal flow as we have yet another disturbance out here, out here towards the Bahamas, that's actually going to be drifting a little bit further off into impacting portions of Florida with some rain. But back behind it, we've got widespread clearing uh, this morning and really kind of comfortable temperatures out there. Let me show you some of these temperatures. I mean, it's a it's a fairly nice cold front considering what we've been through in the in the month of June so far. We got plenty of 40s showing up on the map in parts of Montana. I mean, look at that, guys. I actually found a freezing temperature this morning in parts of Montana. But those widespread 40s and 50s are well to the north. But even if you get down into to the panhandle of Texas, I mean, Amarillo is showing off this morning with 56 degrees. That is some nice stuff considering where you've been. And even Dallas is at 73. No 80 degree temperatures, no hundreds today. This is what we're talking about. 50s along the coast in the Pacific Northwest. We've got widespread 50s and 60s for a good chunk of the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley. But that cold front will continue to drift further off into the southeast and actually get all the way into the coast, a fa fairly rare event for this time of year. There is that cold front that's going to be elongated south of, south of Dallas this afternoon, going to be impacting along that along that cold front. We'll have some of these showers and storm activities into central Texas, into south Texas, into portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, getting into Alabama, parts of the southeast, just right along that boundary here. Nothing really significant, severe of any nature, but you could see some stronger wind gusts at times. And where the heavier rains have been and where they continue to be is on that monsoonal flow, especially into New Mexico with well above average rains. We've even had some flash flooding in these areas. So definitely be on high alert if you live into New Mexico later on this afternoon with some of those heavier rains could upwards approaching one inch per hour at times with these quick downpours that will unfold. But as we transition into tomorrow, you can actually see that cold front with that low pressure center actually drifting out into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to be setting the stage for this potential, like kind of a tropical juice, tropical dis disturbance, uh, kind of developing just more or less drifting out into the open waters. And then some of the upper air guidance actually has this drifting inland into Texas and pulls it a little bit further north with some heavier rains just along the coast here. So we'll be fine tuning this in this upcoming update. But out ahead of this cold front, you got all those rain showers impacting with that disturbance heading towards Florida combined with this little cold front. That'll create more showers and storms and portions up there where, the, where more of a zonal flow really starts to take shape in much of the U.S. So our severe, this intense severe stuff that we've been dealing with for the last two, two months essentially somewhere 
has really kind of taken a break and really subsided with this more of a zonal flow really starting to take shape. So here's kind of the rain amounts over the next two days. So to kind of give you an idea of where some of the rain will be. So back, more or less back behind that cold front, it's pretty much high and dry. You're experiencing very nice, comfortable conditions. Really the rain, the heavier rains are gonna be centered right over to New Mexico, portions of Southern Colorado, even and down here into South Texas, where they do desperately need the rain out for them. They're gonna be picking up some much needed rain for portions of Central Texas and South Texas. And there's that disturbance over the next 48 hours out into the open waters of the Gulf. And this will continue to drift as we get into midweek, but I think eventually it'll stop and then put on the brakes and try to drift a little bit further north and heading towards Texas. But there's the rain showers over the next 48 hours over portions of the southeast getting into the northeast and especially into florida with that tropical disturbance with that little disturbance moving in combined with that uh, cold, you know combined with the cold front but here is that disturbance right so here it is right now so the combination of that little system that's coming off the the coast here with this activity this morning combined with the cold front that low pressure center by wednesday is going to be setting up over over portions say south of houston here and then this, the National Hurricane Center does, in fact, have a 20% chance of this potentially developing in some sort of tropical feature, right? And so I think it continues to drift more or less southwest, west, southwest over the coming days. And I think it stops right along between, say, Corpus Christi and, say, you know, a Victoria here, you know, off the coast by, by midweek. And so... Here's some of the latest uh, European guidance by by Wednesday. It's got a little swirl to it. It's right along the coast, kind of a more of a coastal hugger here with this low pressure center trying kind of trying to develop. I mean, whether this forms into a storm or not, it's going to be very questionable if it does. That's not the big big you know question here. It's just the actually the heavier rains are going to be along the coast. And these are much needed rains, guys. I mean, these areas in Texas have been experiencing a, a, a well into a drought for the good chunk of the last uh, six months. So all this rain is definitely well needed along the coast, but there's the zonal flow. I mean, there's a zonal flow that's continuing to amplify for much of the U.S. Quiet, you know, more or less in a quiet pattern, more, more or less as the every, overall jet stream lifts well into Canada. And there's only subtle buckles, but there's well to the north into portions, a good chunk of the Great Lakes. But there's the drought that Texas has been dealing with over the last six months and it has more or less content intensified with that la nina still in place so all along the coast here where that little tropical juice tropical dis potential tropical disturbance may develop these areas are experiencing extreme to even portions of an exceptional drought so yeah this will be actually much needed rains if uh, whatever comes out of this tropical type system along the coast here so this will be drifting, I think, more or less in between Corpus, Victoria, Houston, and then I think overall the upper air guidance actually would drift this into portions of East Texas and heading towards, you know, Louisiana with, you know, some some heavier rainfall. But let's just go over some of these numbers over the last six months. So this is at the top left hand corner of the screen. This is your precipitation anomalies for the last 180 days. Essentially, we're almost at, you know, we're almost halfway through the year. And so this will kind of give you an idea of the graph on the right hand corner of the screen. All the blues are your areas that you have received above average rains, but what you would typically see over the last six months so up here into the pacific northwest a good chunk of the dakotas right they've been impacted with a lot of a lot of late season snow they've been in, impacted with a lot of just a lot of severe events as of late so they have above average rainfall but the standouts obviously are all the red areas i mean look at that 18 inches below average precipitation in northern california these areas desperately need rainfall and even a good chunk of the desert southwest but a good standout it really just complements over the last two weeks with this monsoonal flow. I mean, New Mexico was just bone dry for months. And then right along this monsoonal flow here in these areas, they were actually showing pockets of areas combined over the last six months with some above average rainfall, believe it or not, because these areas have rained for like 12 out of the last 13 days. So combining with that, we've actually seen some above average rains. But overall, a good chunk of Texas 
is desperately needed in the rain. This is where the disturbance could be right along the coast here, you know, showing up with 12 inches below average, 14 inches below average. So anything that falls along the coast here in the South Texas, even into East Texas as well, well welcome rain out of this system. Uh, over the last uh, six months. So definitely kind of give you an idea of, of where the precipitation has fallen. So as we transition towards the end of the month, this is your overall precipitation anomalies, right? So right now it's, it has not developed. It's got a 20% chance that right now it's the combination of this mesoscale convective system that's gonna be drifting west-southwest combined with that cold front. Won't even actually have like a, a low pressure center in the Gulf until really kind of uh, Wednesday time frame as this continues to drift west southwest well it could be potentially over the Corpus or over Victoria just south of there and some of the heavier rains and some of the right along the coast here and like I mentioned the upper level winds will slowly over time drift this because it still has to drift west southwest and then I think it will actually be pulled north so the <laughs> the uncertainty right now is it's, it's still drifting west southwest so where that where it actually makes the turn will make a big difference on who actually sees these much you know heavier rain amounts and we will be fine-tuning this as we get closer but beyond that here's your overall jet stream Right, so here's the North American view. I, this is more of a kind of a zonal flow where the winds basically go from west to east. They're really flat, right? And so underneath it, you've got the cooler conditions, but you know, over time, yeah, the cool down really is gonna subside and then you're gonna be warming up to more or less normal conditions. And then eventually, you know, above average, above average temperatures, you know, as, as we get to, you know, deeper into the, deeper into the week, especially in the next weekend, but the name of the game is this zonal flow. There's you don't really see any buckles in the jet stream. Nothing, nothing really significant out there, right? So as we transition and start, say July the first here, that you know everything is lifting well into the north and into uh, into Canada. And then here's your overall 500 millibar anomalies. You can see, kind of see some of the weakness underneath, right? You, that's where the the disturbance is going to be. We've got the you know the jet stream kind of well to the north any troughs are over more or less central canada here with a little bit of instability kind of drifted into the dakotas into minnesota up here in northern wisconsin but the main picture this this week is going to be this tropical disturbance that's going to be drifting down into the open waters of the gulf of mexico and we've had all that heat right we've had all that heat for the last what two three weeks a lot of these areas experiencing well above average if not record temperatures for a good chunk for a while right so that cold cool front has been welcome but it's also really amplified these sea surface temperatures right along the coast so this is what that disturbance has to work with got plenty of warm waters well above average to sea surface anomalies for this time of year even for the month of, of june here that that they're going to be taken advantage of so this is what they say hey this is like more or less what they call you know kind of tropical juice you know what they have to work with as this disturbance drifts so as we transition to start july for your friday we've got those above average temperatures kind of coming back right so you slowly drift to more or less average temperatures and then slightly above average but still not like record breaking temperatures or anything like 100 degree heat so i think we more or less stay into the 90s for a good chunk of oklahoma and uh, texas and you can see some of the weakness where obviously the clouds are going to be where the rain could potentially be in south texas heading towards houston that's where the cooler conditions are going to be but but with that zonal flow really kind of taking shape we don't really see any dominating ridges of high pressure or anything like that but more of a more of a comfortable temperatures especially for this week now things will slowly change as we get into next weekend so as we go into this upcoming weekend for your july 4th holiday weekend coming up uh we see those those anomalies right so the uncertainty is where that disturbance is going to flow but right now the overall global guidance basically has it more or less kind of stop in between victoria and say corpus Christy, and then drifting further north so that your some of your higher rain amounts or some of your capable of higher rain amounts or where you could see any rain for this particular system is well down here in south texas i would say probably east texas and this 
would drift into Louisiana, potentially Arkansas, with some of those just kind of a, a, some of these of rains combining with this more or less tropical juice. But here's the overall temperatures by Sunday. So you have that respite, still you're into the 90s, not too many triples showing up on the map, but we do have that ridge of high pressure do kind of coming back. Uh, but that won't be until really into this upcoming weekend for your holiday weekend. So this is actually kind of not that bad. These are 97 degrees is almost what normal conditions would be with normal average between 94, 95 this degrees this time of year. But widespread 90s, if not 80s, drifting further off to the north. So we do have a developing ridge of high pressure that's going to be center part over the center part of the country and impacting you know a good chunk as we go into your july 4th holiday we do see that ridge of high pressure building over the central u.s and then we'd have these troughs it, right now it's in you know it's going to be developing in canada and eventually it'll have a little bit of a buckle but kind of well to the north again so any cooler conditions will be in more or less northern new new england here with this developing trough coming back for the Pacific Northwest and much of the West. So you did experience those well above average temperatures for the last couple of days, but that will subside. And eventually as we head into next weekend, going into your holiday, holiday on July the 4th, we will have much cooler conditions coming back. And then so beyond that, that would probably set the stage for possibly more severe type setups, but that won't be getting into next week so we got plenty of time or the following week we got plenty of time to track that but between now and then there's your there's your overall wins for your work week through friday the zonal flows to the north and then you have some of these winds kind of spitting out maybe 30 maybe 40 miles an hour so really not a wind event with this particular disturbance <laughs> but it's going to be more of a heavy rain event you know where these these were these heavier rains set up and right now it's showing over the open waters of the gulf of mexico with these higher amounts right but there's plenty of uncertainty there with system because it still has to get out into the open waters it still has to drift west to southwest and then it has to stop and then it has to drift further north so the overall consensus right now has the the highest you know, precipitation the, the 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 bulk of the precipitation out into the open waters with still some above average precipitation anomalies just kind of right along the coast so i think these were will where it will be this is with the overall anomalies on the ensembles over the next seven days with those monsoonal flow continuing more of a more of a zonal pattern kind of taking shape for a good chunk of the country and the gfs ensembles kind of imply the same way with the right along the coastal areas for the south texas central texas east texas louisiana and the southeast with that disturbance into the gulf of mexico with that monsoonal flow continuing for a good chunk of new mexico as well so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching if you like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you before and after